when i found the first instruction address where it is in the memory at the time that address will going to be copied to the instruction pointer if i say the functional components then it consists of what unit or input unit will be there so with the help of this input unit data will be given to computer data or instructions are stored in the computer in its memory after taking that input that will be stored in the computer's memory and processed by making use of what cpu Hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all welcome to the session 1 of chapter 1 in the unit 2 of bcs first semester subject called fundamentals of computers so in the unit 2 it's all regarding what anatomy of computer that is what your first chapter in the unit 2 i am rohini ts department of computer science vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysuru So in our today's session, we're going to learn about what are the functions we have in a computer, and also I will be discussing what do you mean by microprocessor and what are the storage units we have. After that, I will be discussing how the program execution will going to takes place in the CPU, and also you will get to know regarding microcontroller. At last, I will be discussing the difference between this microprocessor as well as microcontroller. We'll get into our today's session. First, we'll see what are the functional components we have in a computer so already you know the first unit in that we had a discussion regarding that functional components of a computer if i say the functional components then it consists of what unit or input unit will be there so with the help of this input unit data will be given to computer isn't it so after taking a input by making use of a input devices that input unit will be a collection of one or more input devices by making use of that input devices we are taking a data as a input so then after taking that that will be passed to the central processing unit or cpu within the cpu or a brain of a computer again it got classified into three sub components that includes alu or arithmetic and logic unit next we have a cu that is control unit next we have a register that is going to act as a uh, buffer or it will going to store the intermediate data so these are the sub component of a main component called cpu or a central processing unit next we have one more component that is memory that can be main memory or secondary memory fine both this needs to be there this input devices will going to accepts the data from the input device then that will be copied or that will be given to the processing purpose so once the processing is done here then that will be copied to main memory and if you wanted to store it for a longer time then it will be in the secondary memory whether it is in primary or secondary memory after the processing it should be displayed as a resultant or a output that can be done with the help of this output unit this is also one of the another component so we are going to get the data as an input at last it is producing an information as an output this is how the functional components of a computer looks like and these are the components we have in a computer then how the computer will going to function first what i said the data is entered into the computer by making use of input devices by making use of input devices data will be given as a input and data or instructions are stored in the computer in its memory after taking that input that will be stored in the computer's memory and processed by making use of what cpu or uses them as and when it is required that will be stored in the memory and whatever the data that we have in a memory will be copied for processing purpose after that data is processed and converted into useful information for this processing purpose we have a processor or a cpu then output will going to be generated as per format for example you wanted to see it as a, a soft copy or a hard copy if you wanted to see it as a soft copy then monitor or projector is enough and if you wanted to have it as a hard copy then we require a printer over there that is what uh, as per format and we have a control mechanism that is established for controlling all the functions and also we have a cu or a control unit that will going to controls and coordinates all the activities of a computer this is how the functions of a computer will goes on fine next we'll see what do you mean by micro processor here 
you can see the image of this microprocessor and then it's a controlling unit of a microcomputer already you know the classification of computer micro mini and also we have a supercomputer isn't it so there this microprocessor is a control unit in the microcomputer which is fabricated on a small chip so here you can see that it is fabricated with a small chip and it is capable of performing ALU that is arithmetic and logical unit. It is able to perform arithmetic and logical operation. Arithmetic operations consist of what? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and logical operation, logical and or and all other related things of this ALU will be done or that microprocessor is capable of doing it and communicating with the other devices which is connected to it. So that can be any internal or external devices which connects to the microprocessor that microprocessor is capable of communicating with that and then this consists of an ALU register array and control unit. So this is somehow will look like what CPU only it consists of ALU ALU is also there that means arithmetic and logical unit is also there register array that will going to store the memory address of each instruction and control unit or a CU and uh, already you know this ALU will going to perform arithmetic and logical operation by taking a data from the memory and it will going to do all those processes and this register array consists of register which is identified by the letters so we have a several register in the microprocessor that named as what b c d e h and l as well as we have a accumulator so all these are what register array will going to hold memory or will going to hold the data and instruction for certain time and we have a control unit that controls the flow of data and instruction within the computer the cu will going to controls and coordinates all the data and instruction of a computer so these three are the components of this microprocessor fine next what we have here when you are understanding what is microprocessor you must be familiar with certain words so that is what list of term which we are going to use for microprocessor in that first we have a instruction set so if i say instruction set what it mean instruction set it is a set of instructions that the microprocessor can understand so there we have some standard words which can be understood by the microprocessor then we are calling that set of instruction which can be understood by the microprocessor of a computer then we are calling that as what instruction set fine next what we have here that is bandwidth what do you mean by bandwidth here it is the number of bits processed in a single instruction if i consider one instruction so it will be a set of instruction but if i take on one instruction in that one instruction how many number of bits it got processed in a particular instruction then we are calling that as what bandwidth so if the bandwidth are high or if the bandwidth is more then the number of instruction processed or number of bits processed will be high that is what bandwidth here next we have a clock speed here that determines the number of operations per second so this indicates the number of operation which is taking place for the particular second the processor can perform so what is its capacity that capability of the processing speed will be understood by this clock speed and which unit we are going to use in order to measure it it will be expressed in the terms of megahertz or gigahertz and also we are calling it as a clock rate if the clock rate is high then its processing speed is also going to be high this is what some of the uh, terms which you need to understand along with that we have a word length what do you mean by word length here it depends upon the width of the internal data bus register alu etc this word length will going to be varies and also an 8-bit microprocessor can process 8-bit data at a time so word length in the sense what how many number of bit it can process at a time so if the word length is 16 then that microprocessor has has the ability to process 16 bit of data at a time that what uh, word length specifies and also it ranges from 4 bits to 64 bits so if it is 4 bit microprocessor then it has the ability to or capable of uh, uh, expressing or 
processing 4 bit of data at a time. If it is 64, then 64 bits of data at a time. That will be mainly depends on the type of microcomputer. It will be based on the word length. Okay. Then also we have a data types in this uh, microprocessor that includes binary, deals with zeros and ones and we have a BCD, binary coded decimal. We have a ASCII which is standard, American standard code for information interchange and we have a signed and unsigned numbers. So if it is unsigned that is positive, if it is signed then that is negative numbers. So all these you need to remember with respect to the data types. Next, we'll see what are the features we have with respect to this microprocessor. So we got to know this is mainly for the processing consists of ALU and also it has CU along with the register array. Then what are the features it includes? That includes cost effective. So though it is smaller in size, the microprocessor chips are available at low prices and results low cost. So it's not so costly when we compare this component with other components of a computer. That's why it's efficient or cost effective. And you can consider its size. The microprocessor is of small size. If it is smaller in size, then it can be removed from a computer and it can be portable in nature. That is what one of the one more feature and low power consumption. So in this microprocessor, these are manufactured by making use of this metal oxide semiconductor technology. So this metal oxide will going to uh, accepts or it will going to consumes low power of electricity. That's why it is considered as what low power consumption. It is cost effective and it is smaller in size and it will going to consume low power or a less electricity. And also it's versatile in nature or versatility will be very high in the microprocessor. Why? Because we can use the same chip in a number of application by configuring the software program. This microprocessor is not only meant for particular application. So you can use this for n number of application or for n number of purpose by just changing its configuration of a software program and its reliability. That means we can trust it. So how can the failure rate of an IC or integrated chip or integrated circuit in the microprocessor is very low. That's why it's reliable in nature. Okay. So it's cost effective, smaller in size and it will going to consume less power and then it's versatile in nature along with that it's reliable. These are the features we have with respect to this microprocessor. Fine. Next we'll see about the storage units. So why do we require storage in a computer? Mainly to hold some data and instruction, isn't it? So mainly memory unit is the amount of data that can be stored in the storage unit. So we use a memory unit in order to store the data. So in that storage capacity is expressed in the terms of bytes. We are going to express the storage capacity of a computer in the terms of bytes. So in that first we have a smaller storage unit that is what bit and that is also considered as a binary digit that consists of only two values 0 and 1. If it is 0 then that represents the passive state. If it is 1 then that represents the active states of a components in an electronic circuit. And also after that bit we have a nibble here. If it is a collection or a group of four bits then we are going to call that as a nibble. Okay. One bit, either zero and one. Fine. Then that can be if it is zero off or a passive. Then if it is one active state or on. Then collection of four bits is nibble. Then collection of eight bits is what? Byte. It is a group of eight bits. Then we are calling that as a byte. Then what about this word? That word can be varies. So if I have a 16 bits of data or two bytes of uh, storage unit then I can call that as a word. So you can see here a computer word like a byte only it's a group of fixed number of bits which is processed as a unit. So that will be depends and also which varies from computer to computer but it is fixed for each computer. For example if the word length of my computer is 32 bit then or if the word length of my particular computer is 64 bits then it remains same but it will be varies from computer 
compared to computer and manufacturer company also. So the length of the computer word is called word size or we can also call that as a word length. How many number of bits we have for a fixed length of space then we are calling that as a word and this is also considered as what? word size or we can call that as a word length then it may be as small as 8 bits or maybe long as 96 bits up to 96 bits we have a word here and computer stores the information in the form of computer words that means uh, whether it is storing in 8 bits 16 bits 24 bits like that it will be expressed so here you can see the units and description first we have a bit then we have a byte if it is a collection of 4 byte nibble collection of 8 bits then that is byte and what if it is kb or a kilobyte 1024 bytes will be considered as what 1 kb and 1024 kb 1024 kilobytes is equal to 1 mb or 1 megabyte and next we have 1024 mb that will be equal to how much 1 gb 1 gb is equal to 1024 mb after gb we have a terabyte so 1024 gb will be considered as what 1 terabyte next we have a petabyte 1 petabyte is equal to 1024 tb that is 1024 uh, tb or terabyte it goes on like that let me know what are the uh, next level storage unit that we have in the storage units of a computer in our comment section we'll go to the next concept that's how cpu and memory works if i wanted to get done our work then cpu and memory both should work together so that's why cpu and memory work together in order to run any one of the program and cpu is what central processing unit that will going to executes the program by making use of this fetch decode execute cycle it has to fetch the input from the user then that has to be processed or a decode then that should execute it goes on like that it's taking an input processing and producing an output that is what cpu the way it executes then we have a memory that will going to store the program operations and data while a program being executed when we are executing a when cpu is executing a a program at a time data and instruction will going to be stored in the computer's memory and we have several types of memory that may include register that is going to store the intermediate data we have a cache memory that is fastest memory we have a primary memory that is ram random access memory then we have a virtual memory okay then what about the storage memory and storage both are different if it is memory that uh, what uh, mainly related to primary memory if it is storage then that is external space or external storage space which we are taking so it will going to store the programs and file for a long time though power supply is not there then the storage capacity has a ability to store the data and instruction for long time even when they are not in use and you can take the example of hard disk and hard drives usb sd cards all these comes under storage space fine here you can see the program execution in the cpu so whenever we are giving an input how the program will going to be executed in a cpu what is the first step a sequence of instruction is stored in a memory so i have set of instruction that will going to be fed or that will be fed as an input to the computer then it will going to going to be stored in a computer's memory that is first step then the memory address wherever the first instruction is found is copied to the instruction pointer remember i have a set of instruction that will going to be stored in a computer's memory so all these are what set of instruction so when i found the first instruction you consider this as a first instruction so when i found the first instruction address where it is in the memory at the time that address will going to be copied to the instruction pointer instruction pointer will going to copy the address of first instruction in a set of instruction of a computer memory so in the step 3 the cpu sends the address within the instruction pointer to memory on the address bus then the cpu what it will going to do after getting the address of first 
first instruction then the cpu will going to send the address within the instruction pointer to the memory on the address bus by making use of a address bus the cpu will going to send the address of this first instruction to the computer's memory by making use of this instruction pointer then what the cpu sends read signal to the control bus this control bus so you need to remember the bus as cad control bus address bus and then data bus this address bus will going to carry the address this control bus will going to control its operation whether it is read or write operation so after getting the address of first instruction in a computer's memory the cpu will going to send the read signal to that control bus after that memory responds by sending a copy of the state of the bits at that memory location on the data bus then this data bus will going to hold the state of the bits how many bits we have what operation has to be done what kind of data it is every data of that particular instruction will be copied to this data bus and then that the cpu then copies its instruction register copies its into the instruction register so in that instruction register all the instruction control signals along with its address and then data will be copied to this instruction register so now we have a data which needs to be executed in a cpu then the instruction pointer is automatically incremented to the contain the address of the next instruction in the memory so in the memory we have a set of instruction so with a instruction pointer this will going to point to the address of first instruction that will be copied to the address bus after that control bus will going to perform read or write operation so then data bus will going to get to know what kind of data it is all about so once the first instruction got over then this instruction pointer should be updated to the next instruction then i can say that as what second instruction in a set of instruction so here that instruction pointer will going to be automatically incremented by one and it will go to the next instruction then the cpu will going to execute the instruction within the instruction register same points whatever we did from uh, last three points same thing will going to happen for remaining instruction set so here you can see that we have to go to step 3 step 3 4 are called instruction fetch so in the step 3 4 and 5 so that is what uh, say so taking an address taking a control signal taking a data so all these we are going to call that as what instruction fetch so we are uh, getting the instruction can, uh, that can be related to what its address control signal as well as its data then in the steps 3 up to step 8 that constitutes a cycle from the step 3 taking an its address and that is going to be stored in the computer's uh, register or instruction register up to that we are calling that as what cycle then the instruction execute execution cycle so we are taking a input we are taking its address taking its control signal taking its uh, data instruction everything will going to be stored in this uh, instruction register then we are calling that as what execution cycle and how it will going to be represented here that you can see in this first it will fetch the instruction which is pointed to by the instruction pointer so with the help of this instruction pointer first we can fetch the address of first instruction after that we have to add the number of bytes in the instruction to instruction pointer what is the remaining instruction we have that needs to be added to the instruction pointer then it will going to execute the instruction so if you are done with all the instruction that is what is it the half instruction it needs to be include uh, some more instruction up to the completion of set of instruction if it is half that means we are left out with some more instruction if it is yes then we have to stop so if not then we have to go back again we have to continue that fetch decode cycle this is how the program execution within the cpu will going to takes place i hope you all understood regarding this next what we have microcontroller so till now you got to know regarding what is cpu how it will going to execute a program in a within a cpu and what it consists of and also you got to know regarding microprocessor now we'll see this microcontroller it's a small and low cost microcomputer which is designed 
to perform specific task of a embedded system for example you can take the microwaves there it will going to what uh, microwave information that will going to receive a remote signal so whether we wanted to um, increase the temperature or to minimize the temperature everything will going to be given with the help of this remote signal so that can be displayed on that microwave information so that is embedded system or it is performing a particular task there you are going to have this microcontroller that uh, you can also take the example of air cooler or ac for this also then the general microcontroller consists of a processor even this microcontroller it's smaller in size and it consists of processor cpu will be there the main memory is also will be there ram rom and erasable programmable read only memory and also it has a serial ports in it and then some of the peripherals so that means uh, outer devices or external devices like timers counters all these will be there ac and uh, microwaves all these are the example for this micro controller and then here you can see the difference between microprocessor as well as microcontroller first here we have a microcontroller which we learned right now then already you know about the microprocessor so fine first we'll see the first point microcontrollers are used to execute a single task within an application so if ac is meant for air cooling then it will going to perform that task only so it is somehow like a application software fine it is used to execute a single task but it's not in the case of microprocessor it can be used for big application or for large application or for general purpose we can use and mainly it's designing and hardware cost is low for microcontroller its cost is low when we are comparing it with a microprocessor here designing and its hardware cost will be high in the microprocessor and it is easy to replace but it is not in the case of microprocessor it is not so easy in order to replace its content or its uh, um, hardware devices we'll see the next point of this microcontroller here it is built with cmos technology that is what complementary metal oxide semiconductor which will going to consumes less power in order to operate so it needs to operate only a specific task or a specific application but that is not in the case of microprocessor it is going to consume high electricity or power consumption is there why because it has to control the entire system that's why power consumption will be high when we compare microprocessor with microcontroller and also this microcontroller consists of what cpu ram rom and input output ports but in this microprocessor it does not consist of ram rom or input ports so it mainly uses pin in order to acts as a interface to the peripheral devices or external devices of a computer so these are the difference between microprocessor as well as microcontroller i hope you all understood our today's session in my coming session we'll going to see what are the different input devices we have how each input devices will going to operate what are its applications along with its feature that i will be discussing in my coming session let me meet you there until that keep learning keep on growing thank you